What's going on everyone? My name is Abhinav. I'm a first year MD PhD student and today I wanted to talk about what kind of courses you need to take in order to get into medical school. And there's a lot of different things that a lot of people say and I kind of want to highlight the big things and the things that you should be looking for, especially if you're an undergrad and figuring out which courses to take for your pre-medical requirements. With that being said, I want to say real quick, make sure you like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I do post a lot of different types of content medically related, either things that I'm currently learning about in medical school or tips on how to get into medical school. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. So I have a little PowerPoint here just with like uh, a screenshot of what I actually submitted to AMCAS. If you haven't watched my full video about what's in my AMCAS application, I'll link it in the description down below. It goes through every section, including this one, in a lot more detail. And I give a few tips on what to include into your application uh, so that you can have a well-developed thing and get into medical school. And uh, let's start off with this. So over here, you see the term. Um, this is the term of um, school and the year is right next to it. Um, over here, it says FR, that just means freshman and the school that you go uh, that I went to. Um, so every course has a, t a class with it. So you have to list it as either biology, chemistry, physics, math, or other. And uh, I highlighted uh, a few courses here in a red circle as things that I wanted to talk about and things that you should consider taking in uh, undergrad. So first thing is actually a bit unusual. It's called C phages. And C-Phages is actually a course that's an alternative biology uh, freshman lecture uh, lab course. So, so what that all means is that instead of taking your regular biology lab, you take this extra uh, special course called C-Phages. And it's not offered at any school, but check if your school offers C-Phages. It's expanding uh, throughout the U.S. and Canada, I believe, and a lot more schools are taking it on. I know a lot of Philadelphia-based schools are taking it on. And what CFAGES is, is that you get to do research, wet lab research on your first year of medical school, or sorry, not medical school, freshman year of college. Um, so what happens is that you actually get a bag of dirt from outside and you collect bacteriophages, viruses that infect bacteria and characterize them and actually get to name them. So I got to name my own phage and put it in a database. And we also got to drive an electron mic microscope. And this course was a really good way to get hands-on experience in research in your first year of college, which is insane because not many people think that uh, you can be able to do research that early. And it actually gives you a good idea if you want to get into research or not um, very early on. And it's a good indicator of figuring out what you actually like about biology or what you like about science. And uh, so please do think about checking this out. And as a pre-med, uh, your first year of college is a fairly generic. Uh, the courses are usually well picked out for you and you take the intro classes. So you can see that I took intro to biology and uh, general, calcul uh, general calculus because I had to have a math requirement and general chemistry with lab. And uh, our school also required a communications class. Um, so that's what you see there. Uh, so what I want to further continue on is uh, in my sophomore year. So as you see over here, SO is sophomore. Um, and what I highlighted here is intro to psychology. Now this is important because on the MCAT, psychology and sociology are its own entire section. A quarter of the exam is psychology and sociology. So I think it's a very good idea to take a psychology and what I'll show you later on a sociology course. This way you can be prepared and actually get the terms familiarized within yourself um, so that you can ace that part of the exam because that part of the exam is just like a bunch of terms and applying those terms to uh, research scenarios usually. Um, and there's a lot that goes into it. Now for intro to psychology, uh, my school actually offered another course called Principles to Psychology. Um, which actually didn't get released until after I took intro psychology, but that's like a higher level psychology. So I think my advice is take a, the highest level of intro based psychology as you can. So for us, it was intro or principles. Uh, I would have taken principles if that was offered. Um, but just try to take the highest level of introductory based psychology course as you can. 
And another thing here that you see is directed research in biology. So I love CFAGES so much that I got to do research uh, in my second year. I reached out to a lab and I was able to start research like that. Please do let me know if you want to learn more about how to get into research in your undergrad years. Um, I would love to talk about it and try to maybe set up some uh, resources so that people can get into research early on in their uh, academic career. And the thing about directed research is that it's actually a fairly easy grade to get. The thing about it is you choose the amount of credits or you talk to your PI and they work with you to find an appropriate amount of credits. And for me, at least, every credit was about three laboratory hours. So um, there's two credits here. That means I dedicated uh, six hours per week into the lab. And usually it was a lot more than that, but that was the minimum that was set. And as long as you get your work done and you have results to show for it, uh, usually you get an A, really. So it's a good way to also like boost your GPA. Um, the only thing is you gotta put the time into it. And you can possibly get out a publication with it and that would help you a lot uh, when you're applying for medical school or any sort of job um, or any advanced degree like a PhD. And uh, the next thing I wanna highlight is anatomy and physiology you see over here. I actually took anatomy and physiology in two semesters, so uh, my entire junior year. And the thing about this is that uh, it's very helpful to take this course in your undergrad so you're not blown away by all the material in your medical school uh, career. Because there's a lot of people that don't actually take anatomy and get into medical school, which is totally fine and that's really amazing like i don't think i could have done anatomy uh, that i'm doing right now uh, without uh, taking it in high school and undergrad but if you just come into medical school with no anatomy knowledge that's perfectly fine um, the thing is that you'll probably understand a lot more uh, and remember a lot more if you actually take it beforehand so if you do have the chance to take anatomy and physiology i totally suggest it um, it gets you familiar with the words and it gets you familiar with uh, what everything means and how everything is put together and it just gives you a slight advantage uh, going into medical school because the first thing you learn is anatomy and physiology. Anatomy really, um, gross anatomy of the entire body in about two months. Here in undergrad it was like a full year which is crazy to think about. I didn't highlight it here but biochemistry is a really important course for the MCAT. I really suggest you take biochemistry before you take the MCAT. And I did discuss that in my uh, previous video about going through the entire application. Now going on to the rest of my junior and into my senior year, uh, I highlighted human physiology over here. Human physio um, is a course that's somewhat related to anatomy and physiology, but it dives way more into physiology. Um, and I think it was a good way to put everything that I learned into anatomy into a functional standpoint. Um, so putting how thing, organs work with each other and how the body communicates with each other, both vascularly, uh, neuro, uh, neurally, um, and just hormonally, things like that. Um, and that was a good way to prep into med school as well. It didn't necessarily help me with uh, the MCAT, um, but it was a good way to get my mind into the medical jargon and all that. Um, I highlighted genetics here. Genetics is good to take. Um, this was only a, a semester long course. Um, so if you have the option to take it, it's good for the MCAT. Uh, the MCAT doesn't really test like high level genetics that you might take with the course. But it, uh, if you do take this course, you'll be breezing through the genetics in the MCAT. Here's that principles of so so sociology that I mentioned. So sociology is also the Part of that last section of the MCAT where it's psychology and sociology. Here's their principles. So if you do have a high level uh, introductory sociology available, I highly suggest you take that. And finally, um, this is in my senior year, which as you might know, is way past when I took the MCAT. So these courses aren't necessarily geared towards the MCAT. Um, this is more for like personal interests or if you want to try to get ahead in medical school. So I took hematology and molecular biology. Hematology was actually a really fun course. There was a lab associated with that and we got to like prick our own uh, fingers multiple times and uh, look for uh, white blood cells, learn about the development um, and differentiation of red blood cells and white blood cells. Um, and also in molecular biology, that was heavily 
um, involved in the molecular pathways that cells use, so cellular function, uh, metabolism, all fun things like that. So those uh, courses will definitely help me in uh, my future medical classes, um, but are not necessarily necessary to take as an undergrad. So that's what your senior year is kind of about. It's kind of like electives. So just take anything that interests you. And if you know you're applying to medical school, it's a great way to try to get ahead and uh, figure out um, if there's a specific like path that you like to take. And finally here, in my, uh, I highlighted once again research in biology. Uh, so this was about research credits. Um, again, like if you have time for it um, and you actually like research, I mm -hmm. highly suggest you do it. You don't necessarily need to do research all your years in undergrad, um, but I did. And uh, that I think that is fairly important if you want to get into like an MD, PhD, but not necessary. Um, as long as you have strong foundations in research understanding and you're able to give like presentations in research, that's a, a, a great way to like advertise yourself for those dual degree programs. So with that being said, that's my entire academic uh, career in undergrad. Um, please let me know if anything about this was helpful. Um, I didn't really mention any pre-medical requirement, courses requirements because those are all standard. Um, and all those courses like intro biology and organic chemistry and um, I guess like biochemistry and all that, um, that's all like standard with every medical school and you should be taking all those courses even to apply to medical school. Um, the courses that I highlighted here are may not necessarily be necessary. Some of them are like intro psychology, um, but there's a lot of courses here that are not necessarily uh, needed to apply to medical school, but they are very helpful to have in your bank of knowledge. Uh, so with that being said, please let me know what you think. Again, like and subscribe. Um, it helps me out a lot. And with that being said, I'll catch you next time for a new video. Thanks.